Now, I uh, wasn't going to film this, but um, a few people have asked and I thought I'd uh, show this particular one on uh, camera. Um, one of my uh, other hobbies is collecting the uh, Linksys um, network stuff, especially the uh, really vintage routers from back in the day from 2000, 2001, 2003 um, onwards. I collect all the uh, original Linksys stuff. I collect uh, some of the stuff that Cisco put out under the Linksys brand when they acquired it. I don't collect anything that uh, Belkin have put out since they acquired the name of Cisco. Um, I don't even think if they've uh, done anything to, uh, you know, with that brand. I, I, I haven't searched, maybe they have, I don't know, but uh, I don't collect everything that Cisco put out, but uh, a lot of the original stuff I do. And I have uh, one of each. I have, uh, you know, a router that hasn't uh, had any modifications to it whatsoever, completely stock. And then I have the same one where I've put all the mods in there that uh, people did over the years. Uh, especially flashing it with uh, DDWRT and uh, this is uh, an access point here this uh, got a uh, lot of bad press back in the day when it was released I mean it was a bit long in the tooth when it was released but it was designed to work with the speed boost on the uh, Linksys routers it didn't play too nicely if you uh, tried to connect this to uh, a different manufacturer it's the uh, WRE54G access point um, you want to try and get the one with the Broadcom chip like this one here they put out three versions of this and it's only the Broadcom chip that you can flash with DDWRT uh, this one I've already flashed as soon as I got it it's got two mega memory here to hold uh, the uh, flash in place and it does open it up it gives uh, you know like a lot, a lot of the times when you flash with DDWRT it opens up a lot of things that aren't accessible under the uh, stock firmware but uh, this one I uh, just don't want to flash it I also want to uh, modify it so we can get rid of this uh, dipole antenna here and uh, stick a connector on something like this where we can change the antenna on this because I think that's something that uh, I think it's something that's lacking in a lot of uh, network stuff these days but uh, you know I understand they're made to a price but I think it was particularly lacking on this um, you know going with the uh, Lynx's uh, kind of the way they approach their network stuff which is why it was so popular and they sold it to Cisco so you can uh, add you know possibly a bigger antenna to uh, upgrade it uh, make it a, li a little bit more uh, powerful get a bit more range out of there that's why people loved the early Linksys gear so much so I want to modify this um, the antenna so you know can have them side by side so you can see the original one in my collection and you can see um, you know the one that I've uh, modified to something where you know it, it could have been if they've gone that extra step when uh, putting this out to manufacture now as far as this access point is concerned there's not a lot of parts to it we've got a uh, length of coax here that's connected to uh, a 3dp db dipole antenna that's inside here uh, this coax comes out and it's soldered down onto the board just here so it's just the one connection you can't go adding two antennas to this it was just a, a really simple design but it had the power supply uh, built into this and this was a really quiet power supply for the time the board sits in there and it's connected to the power supply and it had this really flush fitting connector here which is just basically the mains connector with this that just slided in there and made uh, the connection with those two pins and that uh, you know kept it all nice and flat so you could mount this onto a wall if you wanted to but this is another consideration uh, if you want to uh, buy one of these you know possibly to play around with for your collection if you uh, are into that sort of thing like me but you have to be careful uh, there's a lot of these for sale in the US market and of course the US uses uh, 120 volts where uh, here in the UK and in Europe it's 240 so you have to remember to uh, um, you know purchase one that you can use because you can't change this uh, in any way to uh, run at uh, 
you know a higher voltage or a lower voltage now it would be a, a lot easier for me to modify this with an SMA connection on there but I want to stick to the uh, Linksys brand and have a uh, TNC connector I've got this one here I've also got this one here that I've salvaged out of something else but I think I'm going to go with this one uh, that I've got here basically just uh, make a new mount for it here have the uh, TNC mounted like so and then we can uh, you know add a uh, different antenna to that and you know I think as I say if Lynx is Lynx is or you know Cisco would have done this in the first place I think uh, you know it wouldn't have got so much of uh, bad press it would have made it you know a little bit more capable now whenever possible I uh, try not to paint uh, plastic because uh, if you paint plastic you've got to be really careful with it and I've got this piece of plastic here it's a uh, old cap that uh, was uh, a piece of tubing and it's grey as you can see I've already gone in there with the Dremel and uh, I've done some work with the Dremel on this and also uh, drilled out the hole in the centre because we're going to have to make this capable of uh, you know accepting this TNC connector here so I've got this and I'm going to uh, glue this in place and that should give me a nice mount then to mount the uh, TNC connector on here and also we'll still have uh, the operation where we can move the antenna if we want to um, I think that'll work out a lot better as I say you know if it, if I was going to use a SMA which isn't really in keeping with uh, Linksys products uh, it would probably be a, l a little bit easier because I'd just have to cut it off here and mount the SMA into this part here somehow but I've made this uh, little mount here I should make it a little bit easier so you can see now how I've modified that and grounded away there's still a, a little bit of a lip on there but that enables me now to fit it inside this modified plastic cap and hold it in place with the uh, original locking nut so then we don't have to use any kind of a pot here or anything just makes a, a much neater modification when you can do something like that rather than using glues and things so I'm just looking at the original now and seeing how they've uh, connected it up. Pretty simple really, I've got the hole through there that uh, this original coax comes down and this coax is going to uh, come through that hole in the same way. But uh, we've got this fixed uh, dipole on here and I'm thinking of cutting it off um, using this as a marker here, this first uh, ring around there, that's uh, going to sit on the inside of my cap quite nicely and uh, where it's crimped on the coax is crimped on to uh, this connector here that should sit down in there and give us a good mechanical connection then to uh, this hinge part so we can move it uh, into a uh, different position that's going to be a really strong connection then utilizing the uh, crimp on the connector so now all we've got to do is assemble this, I've already prepared the uh, end of the coax here, stripped away and pre-tinned everything and we just have to uh, solder it back into its original position. Now I just thought I'd show you a close up of how I uh, solder something like this in place and especially with it being so small as well. Uh, these two pads here are for the ground, you can see here where I've got the outer braid of the coax folded down here and already tinned up ready to uh, solder in place. I've soldered the signal wire in place, it's a very very small pad just under there, this is a toothpick I'm using by the way. And what I'm going to do now is, yeah this is in the wrong position to solder onto these two pads here, but I'm going to flip it over so the coax is this, then pointed in this direction and then solder this outer braid down onto these uh, two pads it keeps everything nice and clean and also keeps a lot of pressure off this pad if uh, you were to pull this cable uh, these two pads are going to break first before it rips out of the um, little signal pad that's just under there so now you can see exactly what I've done folded it back so we've got the uh, little center pin just under there folded it back on itself and we've got plenty of solder onto those two pads there to make a really really strong connection just makes things neater it's uh, something i do quite often with this uh, really thin coax 
So I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video, just a uh, quick little video, I wasn't going to uh, film this as I said, I uh, have put some high res uh, pictures up on the uh, Facebook group Antennas so feel free to uh, join that group, it's uh, really taking off and growing over there, lots of information that uh, people are sharing on lots of different antennas and lots of different frequencies. Uh, as far as this uh, goes, this uh, Linksys access point, it is a bit long in the tooth now. I mean, I personally wouldn't use this for anything today. Uh, there's much better equipment out there, even with the flash that you can put on this. It's just one for my collection. And people ask me about uh, modifying different routers and things. Um, I haven't done any for a while, but basically they're all the same on the inside. What I've done to this, you can do to... Uh, many other different types of uh, access points and routers and other uh, networking gear it's you know that what i've done on this you can do uh, basically they're no different on the inside so if you did enjoy this video please uh, give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and uh, i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one